it's been a few days since Echo ran away and he's been licking his wounds. It's so funny because he takes three days afterwards before he's like wants to go hiking again. Because he's like, oh, I'm so exhausted. And he just, he can barely walk around outside. Like every step hurts him. Because he like ruins his paws. Because he just takes off after these deer. And he gets these little wounds. This time it's really not that bad. He wore off. Here you can see his pad here on this paw. See how he wore that chunk off there. But it's been a lot worse. I mean, you've seen him before in other videos, and he comes back, and his paws are just shredded. This time, his main injury is this nail right here. See how that tip is broken off? So that little white part that's sticking out, that's called the quick. And as far as I know, like, that can get infected. So he's been keeping it clean by licking it. But what I'm going to do is... This is the stuff that I always have in my backpack. So whenever you see me with uh, my blue backpack on, I've always got this kit in here. It's basically a doggy first aid kit. And then also, like, this is what I call, like, the human first aid kit and survival kit. So I always have this stuff with me. So I'm going to clean his his nail right now and then uh, put some Neosporin on it. And it should heal up pretty quickly hopefully I won't have to like trim it like cut it off which I don't want to do I don't want to cut the quick um it is really sticking out there and if I just touch that like with my finger it'll hurt in fact when I put this um hydrogen peroxide which I don't carry in the kit but I have it here in the trailer I'll just put that on there to make sure it's clean and it should heal up like harden up it's kind of bad now that I'm really looking at it. <laughs> Just put a little hydrogen peroxide there. And Echo's really good at letting me do first aid on him. This might hurt him a little bit. No, nope, it's not hurting him. Good boy. I've had to seal up a wound on his face before he got bit by something i don't know if it was a coyote or a dog but he had a big gash on his other cheek this cheek over here you can see that i got some video of that um i didn't show how i healed it up because <laughs> it was pretty ghetto what i was doing but it worked and there's no scar now mr echo does have pet insurance like health insurance and that'll cover you know major things really um so you know i can take him to the vet for small things like this but i generally i don't i have taken him to the vet for an eye infection and they just gave him some medicine and it healed up after a couple of days and, of course, he goes at least once a year for a checkup, and he gets his vaccines, his shots. There, I guess that wasn't on camera. I'm focusing on his, his paw, not the camera. And I could put a little bandage on there. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. He's doing really fine. He's acting like kind of like a baby right now. I mean, it, it probably hurts, but you saw me just putting that on there, and he didn't really wince. And he was walking around pretty good today. So in another day or two, he'll be fine. If he's still kind of limping on that, then I'll I'll wrap it a little bit. And that should be fine. It's a rare moment when the dogs are right next to each other. I love it. <laughs> hey Dodger
Echo, no. No. Yes. Good. It was super peaceful here. This has like been such an unpopulated area. I mean, you've seen it in my videos. There's really only been me and one other camper here for quite a while. We've had many days here of basically just pure silence. But it's the weekend right now and this does happen sometimes. When you think you have like the most awesome campsite, it, uh, you know, these people now <laughs> that you're gonna see, they're not doing anything wrong, but their motivations for being out here are just so different than mine, right? They're partying and they have families and they're having fun. They're not doing anything wrong. But my motivation for being here is like, I want peace and quiet and simplicity and like, you know, no distractions, no loud noises. And let, let's go outside and you can see what's going on here. And I do have this whole area is still is still mine. Like my my site, you know, there's nobody encroaching in my area at all. So it's it's not that. Like I I just want to be clear that I'm not complaining. I am complaining because this is not fun for me. It's very loud inside the trailer. It's like boom, boom, boom. But they're doing what you're supposed to do out here, which is pretty much whatever you want and you know they're not they're not doing anything dangerous and they're not coming into my campsite there's ATVs just they just keep going back and forth in front of my camp and they're not using any of the other roads for whatever reason they're just driving back and forth in front of my camp and there's probably like there's, there must be 40 or 50 people over there camp together so they got their their music. Their it's I mean it's pretty loud, um, and then they got the ATVs. They got their side by sides. They got their dune buggies. So it's very it's very noisy, and it goes on till pretty late at night. It's just it's really. I'm just showing this because this actually really rarely happens that a bunch of noisy people, people come in. You know, most of the time when I'm out in nature camping like this as a nomad, most of the other people that are camped around me are doing the same thing. They're, it's just one or two people basically. I guess that's the key. And they're, you know, they're, they're not weekenders. These are just weekenders. So they're, they're partying. They're having a good time. They're getting away from the city. They want to play loud music and they're, you know, they, they cleared an area and they set up a volleyball court. So they're like, you know, they're, they're having a good time. They're partying. That's what they're doing. That's what they're using the public land for. And it's totally fine. And I could move. But so my thought is that, well, they're only going to be here for the weekend and then they'll be gone. So in a couple days, I'll be back to my, you know, nice peace and quiet, nice and silent and chill campsite. And I, you know, in a sense, like I'm kind of lucky, at least there, you know, you can see, you can see where they are. They're over there. So they're not, they're not super close to me, you know, but I mean, they are really loud. Like it's, I can hear it in my trailer. And then at night, like they leave these bright, really bright lights on that don't just light up their area. Like it shines into my trailer, which is kind of a, that's kind of annoying too. I don't know if it's the, the music or the constant driving in front of my campsite that bothers me the most. It's like the most irritating. Because what happens is like, 
outside it's almost quieter than it is inside in a sense somehow like being in the trailer it really like reverberates in here so the bass of the music and the engines it's like it's really <laughs> it's really pretty loud but you know the good thing about being a nomad and having a house on wheels is that i can move in this situation there's not a lot of spots i could move to right now just based on where the roads are you know how the the road conditions are and where i can get to so this is about as good as it's going to get for me in this area um, because there's it's a busy weekend i'm being realistic like it is bothersome to me you know i don't like it but i have to understand it like i have to it's they're doing what they want to do i just wanted to show like it's not always peace and quiet like things things do come up you do get neighbors that you know where your motivations kind of clash you know the things you want to do and the things they want to do they kind of they kind of clash and the good thing is you know and especially if you're like living in a van you just turn your key and you just drive somewhere else and you go you go camp somewhere else deeper into the woods there's a lot of spots i could go um just with just the truck so i've been thinking about that like maybe i'll load up a little bit of gear and take the dogs for a night or two in the tent i can do that so i have options so i you know i am technically i am complaining but it's the truth is that i have options but yeah it's the next day you know i'm kind of getting used to it now i guess The noise, the music, they were playing music last night till like four in the morning, <laughs> which now I'm like, well, the music isn't the worst of it. It's the, it's these, uh, these ATVs, these off-road vehicles, and they just keep going by. I don't understand what's so fun about just driving on the same road over and over. Like I get it. They're loud and stuff. And the, and then they got these side-by-sides. And they're loud, but I thought the point was like, you get in in it and then you like go somewhere. Like, you know, there's so many roads here where like where we're gonna go hike right now. There's all these awesome roads for off-road vehicles, but they just keep going right in front of my trailer, back and forth, back and forth. I mean, it's not even, they're not even, it's not even like a quarter mile track. Just repetitively, over and over and over. <laughs> I feel kind of bad because like, I'm being such a fuddy-duddy about like people just having fun and doing their thing. You know, they just have a different... It's a big group of people, so they, they just have a different idea of how they want to use their time out here. And it directly conflicts with how I want to spend my time. I only have to endure this for one more day. I mean, I'm hoping, right, that they'll be gone tomorrow. But it's kind of a good reminder of, you know, if I was living in a, a city, like in a house or an apartment, then you have neighbors and they're right next to you and you don't know what they're into like how loud they're going to be or how obnoxious or what they're doing is conflicting with what you're doing and being out here on the road you just have this constant ability to move this constant freedom you got to keep an eye on dodger there he is. He's right back there. But if you're stuck in one place, you know, you're paying rent at that one location, then whatever your neighbors are doing, it's going to, you know, it could potentially directly affect you. You know, if they're smoking, if they're just loud, you know, louder than you, if they play music, having parties. 
you know, whatever it is, if they're like in a band or, you know, practicing their trumpet. So you get a lot of comforts, you know, having a, a static home. You really do get a lot of comforts. You get running water. I mean, look at me, like I'm, I haven't taken a shower in, well, a few days now. I haven't been getting that sweaty, so I'm not too rank, you know? But that's one of the comforts that I kind of give up is like, you know, daily showers, you know? And like this shirt, you don't want to know how long it's been since I washed this shirt. You've seen it in a few of my videos lately because I've been wearing it a lot. I'm just keeping an eye on Echo because he's looking at stuff out here. I think he just saw a vulture. And then Dodgers. He's lagging behind a little bit. He's just chilling in the shade. So we're going to find a nice spot here in the shade. And I'm going to set up the hammock. And I'm going to be far from any road. So the people that are out here doing their off-roading stuff, which is pretty loud, I won't be near near them. It's just weird. I, I just don't get it. Like, there's so many roads out here, and they're so rarely used. Because, I mean, I hike, you know, I hike a few miles out, out here on these roads into the woods. And they're just awesome. And I never, never see anybody in their side-by-sides or their ATVs or their... They're dune buggies. They just kind of putz around camp, and like that's somehow that's fun. I don't. I just don't get it. Like, I thought you'd want to, you know, go miles because you can go. You got a tank of gas. Like you can go miles into the wilderness out here. But I guess it's just kind of a different. The weekenders, they just kind of. I don't know. They just want to do donuts in camp. <laughs> so when you're hanging a hammock, I got like a few, a few tips that I like to follow. You know, a day like this where it's full sun, I want to have the hammock set up where it's pretty shady. And... You would think like right here with these pine trees here would be a good spot. I mean, these are great trees to hang a hammock. But if you look down on the ground, there's not a, a whole lot of shade. It's not completely shaded. And if you're laying out here in the hammock, you know, for a couple hours, the shade is going to move around. It's kind of hard to think like mentally, like where is the shade going to end up over the next hour? So one of the techniques I got is you look for a deciduous tree. They're lower to the ground and, you know, see, see how it bushes out more. So you're going to get a lot more shade around that area. And then if you look, the grass, see how you got this tall grass here? I mean, it's just, a, it's just an indicator that that little area right in there gets a lot of shade. So if I set up my hammock where the tallest grasses, you know, I have a good idea that I'm going to have a nice shady hammock spot. One of the things that I don't like is rocks on the ground when I'm setting up a hammock, mainly because if I fall out of the hammock, whether it's because of my own clumsiness or I set up the hammock wrong and like the straps break or something like that, you don't want to land on rocks. So that's a kind of the main thing I I think about if we sneak up on Dodger we might get to see what he does in his natural habitat you know he hates being on camera but he's just out here eating grass he's being a good dog
the first spot I picked had ants all over the ground that I didn't notice until the last minute. And Echo actually got bit by one of the ants. So I was like, well, we got to move. So this is our spot now. Dang, it's so much quieter out here. I can still kind of hear the music. We're probably, well, we're probably three quarters of a mile from camp. And I got Echo tied up on this little rope here. It's really not strong enough to hold him necessarily, but as long as he's tied up a little bit, he's, he's totally fine. Even if he sees a deer, he's not going to go running because he knows he's tied up. But I'm excited to get uh, this GPS tracker I found for him online. I'm going to have fun experimenting with that. Wow, he's really chowing down. It's good grass, huh, Echo? Is that good? Well, Echo got up into the hammock with me. I guess the bugs are out. And they seem to go to him first, these little tiny flies. He was jumping around, acting all goofy, and then he clambered up in here. He scratched me a little bit. He was so excited to come up here. But now I'm seeing the bugs. And uh, they will bite me too, so... I don't know if we got to move or maybe just head back to the trailer. You want to go back to camp? Let's go back to camp. Come on, you got to go. Oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> there you go, you're free. <laughs> 